Hi Design Pickers, my name is Matthew Sear and today Figma has just released variables for typography. We're going to be setting up our own variables and setting up our typography with variables. So if you'd like to learn how to apply both our numbers as a variable type to our typography and our string variables to our variable types for typography, then you're in the right place. We're going to be setting these up and we're going to also learn how to even use styles to manage the collections of variables that are applied to our typography. If you'd like to jump in and learn more about how to use variables for typography inside of Figma, you're in the right place. Sit back, relax, and let's jump into the video. All right, here we are inside of Figma. So we can apply our typography variables by setting up a string variable that can define a font family or our styles or our weight. We can use number variables and we can define that line height. We can define the paragraph spacing, the letter spacing. We can also, for weight, define it by a number and we can define the size by a number. What we will need to know is well, let's jump over here to have a quick look at our Google fonts. We could set up a name, which that would be our string. We could then use either a number or text to define the style or the weight of the actual font. And you'll notice that as we scale going down here, you can see that we've got 300 and a 400 and a five, so on. They're ways that we can define the weight with a number or we can use the name to define it by the uh, weight as well. So we're going to keep this one simple. We're going to define the weight using a number and we're going to define the name using a string and we are going to be defining line height and the paragraph spacing and letter spacing as well. Key things to note is we can't use percentages in any of these at this present time with the release. I would probably suggest that we look at using a combination of actual styles and type to work with this, but we'll get through that into the latter part of the video. Let's get started applying a variable numbers to our fonts. So if we go right over here, we can check out some of our fonts. We have our headers all set up. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually try to set these up with our actual font setup. So let's create in the collection and let's put these together. We're gonna to start by setting up our headers. So I will jump over here and what I have done is I actually created my initial one you'll need to go click up to the top here, go create collection, and we can start to add in those into the collection. But to save some time, what I've done, I set a collection, I called it typography, I created a group. And if you need to know how to create a group, you can click, you can right click on it, and you can create, and create a group. I have a group called fonts, and I started by creating my first font group called H1. And what we can do is we can start to apply these values directly down our actual uh, collection. And how can we apply these values to our font? If I zoom right into here and I look at my initial font over the top here, what we can do is we can actually start to apply our variables directly to it. Here's my Poppins font. And I can go to variables. And now I can actually find that H1 font. I can go over the over here and I can go H1. Uh, H1. And there we go. I have my Poppins font. And what we can do is we can start to apply our numbers. So over here, I applied that 16, but what we'll do is we'll be able to go to our variables 
we can go to now our font and we can see our font size. We can apply that font size to our variable. We can then start to apply other parts. For example, here's our line heights. So we can go here and I can go line height and I can apply my line height. Over here, I have my paragraph space spacing. I can go to our paragraph spacing and apply my paragraph spacing. And I can continue by also uh, applying this here. And as you can see, this was a percentage. So we may not be able to apply percentages directly now, but we'll be able to apply them into the future. I'm going to maintain my percentage here because what we can do is we can turn this into a style at a later stage that can contains all of our variables. So for my weight over here, you can see that I can apply either a style label or I can actually apply my number. At the moment, I have my 500. So I can click on my variables and I can actually do weight and I can find that font way and I can apply that. And you can see no, no changes are made, which means that it's selected the correct weight. So now I'm using on this uh, font right here, my different variables for those key attributes. And what I can do is I can decide on how I want to manage these. So if I would like to end up, let's say having the ability where the I would like to be able to change between different different actual font families, I could mm, duplicate the collection, maintain the same values, and then leverage a different font family. For example, I can go over here, I can actually switch this, let's say to Roberto. And let me even switch it up the top there. I can apply, copy and paste. And now what I can do is use the switch of these layers for my type to Roberto. And now it would leverage all of my same stats and change it to Roberto. And if I needed to adjust for any of these, I can end up uh, adjusting any of the values that I wish. Another thing that I could do is also use other collections to manage these variables. Let's remove this Roberto and let's open up and create a new collection. And this collection could potentially be my font families. With my font families, what I can do is I could actually create myself a string and I could call these font families. And what I can do is actually start to set up those different font families here instead. We will grab that Roberto front font. There we go. We will grab that Poppins one and we are going to grab our Inter font. I'll use the names of the font families by their modes like, and what I can do is now ally these into my typography set. So I can go to my typography and now I can leverage my actual font family inside of my set. And this is where we can start to basically enable ourselves with setting up actual key controls to manage our font more effectively. And as you can see, we have this thing called font size. Now over the design here, you can see that we actually have one, two, three, and we got four, five, six, and seven. We got seven different sizes and we could actually set those up into our groups. Now we only have four modes, so maybe we set up different ways of moving between our different size groups 
and we can do a few things there. I'll leave that one up to you. But what we can do here is we could also set up a variation for our font weight. I've got three weights. So let's create this one. We're going to go new collection. I'm going to actually call this one font weights. And we can create this one by a number. And we can actually use the same name, so we may as well. I'm going to put this in into a group called font weights. And this will be my 400. A 400 would be a regular. And there we go. So what we've done is basically added the ability to switch between just the weight on our font as well as switch between the actual font family. And we can tie these directly in to our font that we have over here. So I can go font and I can find my font weight. And this will start on there. So right here, I can now define my weight using my switch. I can define my font family also using my switch. So I got Poppins and I got my weight there and we can basically skip uh, most of this. And this is where we can take this and turn it into a style. So here we can create a new style and this will be my H1. So now we can have less styles overall that can basically manage our actual fonts because these fonts themselves can start to manage themselves and we can just have a simple switch that will allow us the ability to apply a different family or a different weight to our text styles. So this is a high level overview of what we can do now with Figma's new typography variables. I'll be following on with future tutorials and videos as I continue to explore and uh, put these together. So stay tuned for those for the next time. Provide comments, feedback, likes, subscribe, and get involved. Check out the Pixelink variable toolkit. It's our plugin that we've designed and built for Figma and for the design community. So this is a quick and easy way to apply your Figma variables to all of your designs quickly, easily. So we want to get your feedback to continue to grow this and make it a better tool for everyone. You'll find all the links in the description box below. So thank you. And until next time, keep creating amazing things and we'll see you all in the next video. All right.